on the screen have in common? Well, they all wish that they were Beyonce. I mean, who hasn't? Her voice, her style, her hair. You'd have to be kidding yourself if you hadn't wanted to be like her at some point. Well, other than that, they're all perfectionists, or people who set extraordinary levels of achievement and performance in their personal and in their professional lives. I think when I said the word perfectionist, though, a lot of you inwardly cringed because the word has such a stigma. I mean, we've all heard that it's impossible to obtain perfection, or that it's a child of time, meaning that it changes as you get older. So we have to ask ourselves then, why do we laud perfectionists? How has Beyonce seemingly unlocked the key to life, where she accomplishes every goal she sets out to do? Why can't I be Beyonce? Today, I want to dive deeper into the negative stigma behind perfection and explore the question, should we strive for perfectionism? Or perhaps, maybe part of the problem lies within the question. Whenever I said I was going to give a talk on perfectionism, everyone I was saying is to said, makes sense in a tone of voice that made you think that I was admitting to a bad habit. Even through these interactions, I was able to see the stigma that surrounds perfectionism. And believe me, I wholeheartedly admit to being a perfectionist, as anyone who's worked with me on a group project can attest to. But as it turns out, there's another type of perfectionism that's associated with the negative stigma, called maladaptive perfectionism. According to the World Economic Forum, Maladaptive perfectionism is a desire for perfection that causes harsh self-criticisms and avoidance behaviors of challenges and a fear of failure. According to generational research done by Kieran and Hill, there are two types of perfectionists that can be under the maladaptive perfectionism, other-oriented perfectionists and socially prescribed perfectionists. Other-oriented perfectionists are those who place unreasonable expectations on those surrounding them, while socially prescribed perfectionists are those who believe that everyone is constantly evaluating them and their actions critically. According to research done by Hewitt and Flatt, maladaptive perfectionism can lead to anxiety, depression, burnouts, poor relationships because of unequal expectations between partners, and even early mortality. A good example of maladaptive, socially prescribed perfectionism would be if you were working for weeks and weeks on a school project or on a work report, <coughs> so that's maladaptive perfectionism, on a work report where you had to get everything perfect because then people would criticize you if you didn't, and then deny that it had taken all that extra effort in order for you to be able to accomplish your goal because then it wouldn't seem as perfect. But I mean, we've all been there. When you think about Beyonce, you don't think of the countless hours she spent choreographing the dances, or the years she's taken to sing, or the years she's taken to perfect her craft. You think of the final performance, effortless. So why then are we so obsessed with perfectionists? Well, I would argue that it's because in conjunction with maladaptive perfectionism, there's another type called adaptive perfectionism. The second type of perfectionism, adaptive perfectionism, is a type of perfectionism that is a normal, healthy type, where you derive satisfaction from your successes at your internal goals. But most importantly, it is without the harsh self-deprecation that accompanies maladaptive uh, perfectionism. Adaptive perfectionism is an individually targeted and situationally specific type of perfectionism. And according to research done by Kilbert, it's when a person derives pleasure from their efforts and labors at accomplishing a task. And then this in turn motivates them to succeed even more at a goal. A good way to think about adaptive perfectionism would be a jelly donut. So if you put too much jelly into the donut, then you're putting too much pressure on the structure and it will explode. The same could be said for if you put too much internal pressure on yourself. Hopefully you won't explode. But, in the same way, if you put too little jelly into the donut, then you're just stuck with a dry and bland donut. The same could be said for the situational specific specificity of adaptive perfectionism. If you do not push yourself at some point, then you'll stagnate and you'll never truly be able to see what you can accomplish. 
Adaptive perfectionism is like the heavenly jelly donut, with the perfect balance between the golden brown cake and the sweet strawberry jelly, or between your ideals of perfectionism and your capabilities and realism. So, like Beyonce and her performances, I wanted to have that balance in my life between music and movement and exercise. So, I decided to participate in the musical, um, which is difficult enough in itself. But at the same time, I also tried to participate in the varsity lacrosse season, where I went to tryouts and practices during the musical season. While the experience was difficult, I was able to obtain my ideal of perfection, which was that balance between the two, because of my capabilities of time management and of multitasking. So, the question that's on everybody's mind. How can I become like Beyonce? Can I become like Beyonce? Well, the fact that I'm even up here talking to you illustrates the benefits of adaptive perfectionism. I'm terrified of public speaking. I it, no, I know it must not seem like it because I participate in musical and I'm usually pretty good about talking in class discussions, but in certain situations, I get terrible stage fright. My palms start to sweat, I start to shake, everything in front of me goes black and fuzzy, kind of like right now. Um, <laughs> but, so how am I able to speak to you now then? Well, through adaptive perfectionism, I've been able to gradually set goals for myself, where I've been able to get to the point where I can be speaking to you today. Initially, it was just speaking in front of a large crowd of people. So I tried out for the fourth grade musical, and I practiced my lines over and over again in order to be able to be a little bit better at speaking in front of people. And I was finally able to perform, which was my ideal of perfect. Next came speaking in front of a class without a script and sharing my own opinions with people. Through debate style seminars and discussions, I was able to get my voice out there and to actually participate, which for me was my version of perfect. It's been through these goals that I've set for myself at the beginning of each school year that I've been able to become a little bit more perfect at public speaking. These tiny goals have led me to the point of this amazing opportunity, of this TEDx talk. Initially, I didn't even consider it because if I had considered it during my junior year, the idea of speaking in front of a large group of people and then sharing my thoughts and feelings is frankly terrifying. In musical, you're singing someone else's words, and in a class discussion, it's with a small group of people. But with this, you're sharing your imperfections and your thoughts and feelings with everyone around you. But I can honestly say that through this process and through this experience, I've become a little bit more perfect at public speaking. And I've honestly enjoyed every bit of this experience. And it's motivated me to do this a little bit more in the future. Because like Beyonce, I decided to be flawless. Thank you.